In this video, I want to focus on how to use X's in Venn diagrams. I'll make another video on how the various use of X's work within all Venn diagrams. You'll remember that we did this problem, number three, on page 271 in the examples in your textbook that ended up with an X in the empty space where the P circle and M circle meet because part of that circle had been shaded out by the larger part of the M circle, by all M, R, S. The mood and figure for that was I, A, I, 4, and it was unconditionally valid. We knew that it was unconditionally valid for two reasons. One, because if we look at the conclusion, it is contained in the diagram, and two, we can double check that unconditionally valid, conditionally valid, invalid from both perspectives. We can check our validity by looking at the charts of unconditionally valid forms and conditionally valid forms. So today I want to look at two other examples where X's are used. This one is where X's and shading are used. And we'll look at another one like that right now. Okay, so let's look at, in the same area of your textbook, number five, page 272. They already give you the symbolized argument, so you need not worry about symbolizing it at the moment. They give you some MRP all S are M, therefore some S RP. Now, if we create a large Venn diagram, again, we want to begin by drawing our three circles, identifying our major, minor, and middle terms. Our major term P is listed in this premise and it is first from top to bottom so it's in correct standard form. So the mood would be I A I and the figure would be 1. So we'll use that later to check our answer. The Venn diagram will always have the minor term here, the major term here, and the middle term here. They could be different letters but here they've given you M, S, and P just to make it as easy to understand as possible. One of the rules, if you'll remember, for Venn diagrams is that you enter in the universal premise first if you've got a universal and a particular statement. If you've got two universal premises, then you could enter in either one first and it wouldn't matter. And if you had two particular statements, it wouldn't matter which one you entered in first. But when you've got a universal statement and a particular statement, you've got to enter in the universal one first because you have to do shading before you know where to put the X's. So if we look at the universal premise, all S are M, we can take from this larger diagram and just on the side make a note to say, what would it look like if it was just those two circles that we were focusing on? Because that's what it will be when we put the information into the larger diagram. So if we say all S are M, we're going to want to shade out all the parts of S that don't overlap with M to show that all the blank spaces are what we're concerned with. That where S and M overlap inside of this I, so to speak, those are the S's that we're concerned about, not all of these other S's that we've shaded out. In the larger diagram, we would shade that same Pac-Man or larger part of S here and ignore that third P circle where it intersects and divides that Pac-Man into two. Remember, the third circle always divides any larger part, any Pac-Man, or any I, or center part, into two. When you're shading, you just shade the entire area and shade over that third circle as if this is what you're doing. Now, if we move on to the particular premise, sum MRP, 
then we'd take a look at m here, and we'd take a look at p here. If we want to say that sum m r p, we want to put the x where it is, not like shading, which is the opposite. The x goes where it is, the s blots out everything that's not important. So we want to say that some members of M are also in this area that overlapped with the P circle. So our X would go here in this I. On the diagram, this I is in this particular place. This I, I'm calling it, is here. Now, Unlike the example that we saw before, in that example, the area that we were looking at, which happens to be the same one, there was already part of it shaded. So we knew that because this third circle S divided this I into two parts, this part and that part, right? Or parts two, three, four. So parts three and four, if you're looking at the larger di diagram, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are the parts of the Venn diagram. So if we're looking at parts three and four for the I, we put the X in the empty spot because that's what was left over from what we'd shaded. This time, we still have parts three and, five, and four. That's a seven. We still have parts three and four, but there's nothing there to guide us. It's still divided in half by that third circle, but there's nothing to guide us. So I need a way to show that my X is the takes up the entire I. So what I do is put it on the line that divides it. So the line that you put it on is always going to be between the, the one that is made by the third circle that's dividing your area in question into two. Then you can simply to either take a look at the diagram and determine whether sum S R P, we can draw that out very quickly, sum S R P, we can say, okay, do we find that information in the diagram? Well, Likely not. Um, so we think that it's invalid from both perspectives because this information that is the conclusion is com when it's compared to the information that we have in this circle, which is the premises, what we're really doing is asking when we combine the premises and draw them out in graphic form, do they represent the information that's in the conclusion? So just like with proofs, we're not using the conclusion, we're just using it as a guide. We're not actually entering in any information for the conclusion in the Venn diagram. So we're pretty sure that it's going to be invalid from both perspectives because there's no X here in areas three and six where it should be. But let's double check with mood and figure. So if I look at my unconditionally valid forms chart, IAI1 is not there. So then I would move on to the conditionally valid forms chart, and I'm looking for IAI under figure one there. I don't find it in either place, therefore it is in fact invalid from both perspectives. In the next video, I'll show you an example of a Venn diagram that has two particular premises.